The next step in our build is to plug in the USB and uh, start up Clean Flight to uh, configure the NACE32 flight controller so that we can verify the motor's direction and to calibrate the ESCs. Now, the simplest way or the easiest way to find Clean Flight, flight if you don't have it is to actually just go to cleanflight.com and from there you click on GUI download here. That will open up the, the Google Chrome um, link and all you do is click on Add to Chrome. It will come up with this question, you say Add App, then it opens up this link or you can go to it manually afterwards. Chrome and you type the Chrome colon forward slash forward slash apps and then one of the options will be clean flight. You just click on that and there you have it. That is clean flight. If you have not installed the drivers yet, you need to download and install them from here, from this link here. So you click there and it will open up the download page. From the download page, you just select your operating system and I will be downloading this one. I've downloaded and extracted the drivers. I'm going to be installing the 64-bit version because I've got a 64-bit uh, operating system on mine. It comes up with this screen and next. Accept the agreement. Ready to use. It's finish. Okay, and we can close that down. We can close this screen and we can go back to clean flight. Okay, now that we have the drivers installed and we have our USB cable connected to the, uh, the Ishin Racer 250, we go ahead and you plug in your USB cable onto the side of your computer on the back or wherever. I have now connected my USB cable to my computer. Right, now that we have it connected to the computer, we'll see that light start blinking next to the blue light. The blue light is solid and the green light is flashing. Now that it is uh, connected, we click on connect. Okay, and then we will see this come up. Just a note, if you need any documentation or would like to read, you're going to be down downloading your documentation there. I'm going to leave everything else as default for now. The first thing I'm going to be doing is do ESC calibration. That we do under this menu on, this, on the left. We click on motors. Right, the first thing we need to do is we make sure there are no props on our uh, machine. We click this, then we move this slider all the way to the top. Now, because there's no battery connected, this your, there should be no etc. Now you connect your battery. Right, with that master slider all the way to the top, we are going to connect the battery. And then as it's beeping, we move it all the way to the down. There will be a specific beeping and then we remove the battery again. And we remove the battery. Next we have to confirm the motor spin direction. Now motors 1 and motor 4 spin clockwise and motor 2 and motor 3 spin counterclockwise. This motor and that motor spin clockwise that way. So we have to confirm when we install these motors that we have the props, uh, the prop nuts in the direction that we, if you spin the motor, they lock. And the same with that one. It's going to be spinning clockwise, so it locks. These will be spinning counterclockwise this way and this one as well. So yeah, that's a quick test. Now, to confirm that they are spinning in that direction, we're going to connect the battery again with it connected to the computer. Right, and back to the computer. 
on the computer, you're going to lift them one by one. Now take note, this is motor one. So we're going to lift it. As we lift it, it's going to start spinning. You just need a little bit. And now you can just touch and you can feel. This one's supposed to be going clockwise, but it's in the wrong direction. It's actually spinning that way. So I need to swap out any of these two cables. So I'm going to take the middle cable and swap it with one of the outside cables. Now repeat that with all the motors. Motor 2 is at top right. Now to change the direction on the motors, now make sure that you have no power or anything connected. We're going to take off our transmitter antenna again. Put that one side. Flip it upside down. And I'm going to use my little helping hands because it's just so much easier. I already have my soldering iron ready, nicely warmed up. And I am going to be taking that one and the middle one. And I'll put this one onto the middle now. And I put this one onto the outside. That changes the direction of the motor. So and take any of the two motors. I'm going to take the outer motor, oh, okay, <laughs> outer ESC wire, and the inner one. That's how simple it is to change the direction of the motor. Now we're going to confirm the motor spin direction again. First things first, always the transmitter antenna. Before you add any power to the system ever, always make sure that you have your transmitter antenna connected. Testing, yeah. And there we go. It's spinning clockwise. And that's how we confirm the spin direction of our motors and also change the direction. With a clean flight open, the window you do not want to be connected so if you have connected I'm just going to show you if you have connected just make sure you disconnect next you click on firmware flasher and then from this drop down box we are going to go down and we select the latest version now at, at the moment as of 10 June 2016 this is the latest version available which is stable now if you're installing later you may have a later version available so obviously go for the latest stable version I'm going to select this one I am also going to select full chip erase and then we click on load firmware online and it will come up with this window describing the firmware and the changes from the previous version, etc. And now you click Flash Firmware. Once the firmware has been flashed, it will say Programming Successful. Once your firmware has been updated, uh, the next thing is to go back to the welcome screen, click connect. Now, if you see your, what your copter, your racer, um, in a funny shape like this, it is not quite level. I'm just going to move mine a little, little bit. Right, and as I move it, you can see it move there. Now, the first thing you want to do now is just make sure your quadcopter is on a very level surface like a desk that you uh, know is level etc and then just calibrate the accelerometer that will level it out a lot of the arming issues that people have is because the accelerometer is skewed as mine was there and now it is level and once it's level obviously it will arm now I am configuring mine for a R10D receiver. Yes, the R10D receiver. Now the cables, just again, I have connected one through eight with the cables as follows. The first one, which also includes the power, has the white, red, black. 
The others are single cables. This seems to be a, a gray cable. Then it's yellow, green, yellow, black, green, yellow in the same order that they are on the other side of the port. Anyway, that's your receiver. Right, here's the uh, transmitter. Switching it on. Now, if I uh, check here, now just, uh, just for a matter of interest, I'm just going to go back to configuration. If you don't see anything move on this screen, I'm just going to throttle and play with some of the sticks. If none of this moves, go back to configuration. Please note this is only for the Radio Link R10D receiver with the Radio Link AT10 transmitter. If you don't have that combination, this does not apply. Make sure that you have a RX parallel PWM set like that. And if you back to receiver, then everything should work. If not, something's wrong with your receiver, etc. Right, so I'm throttling. I've got nice throttle values. Uh, your is there. Your with throttle up is there. And uh, my pitch control works. And so does the roll. Now, obviously, I have uh, some auxiliary switches we are not going to be using for now. But yeah, even they work. Right, so. Yeah, I've got some additional switches that I have set up, and yeah, I'm not going to be using them for now, but they are available. Just something I'd like to mention is, on your configuration screen, there is an option here which says motor stop. Now, currently this is switched off, and uh, if it's switched off, your motors will spin when it starts, when it arms. I'm quickly going to demonstrate. Right, as we have it here, yeah, I have the radio ready, and when I arm, the motor starts spinning. Now, if you don't want the motor spinning when you arm it, then we have to switch that option off. And we click that to stop the motors from spinning when we arm it. Now, to activate it, you have to click here on Save and Reboot. Right, and let's test it. Right, and I'm going to arm again. And there it is green. So it'll only spin up when I actually give it throttle. Okay, I'm going to disarm. And there we go, the green light is off. So that is the two ways of doing it. On your eight, uh, Radio Link AT10 transmitter, if you push pitch forward, you want that pitch to go to the right, and pitch back, it goes to the left. Now, by default, if you are going to pitch forward, it's going to do that, which is wrong. And if you pitch backwards, it's going to go to the right. That's wrong. I just quickly want to show you where you change that in your radio. In order to reverse the channel or uh, um, the pitch, what you need to do is on the AT10 uh, transmitter is going to mode, then go down to reverse there, select it, and then on the right, the elevator. Now I've currently already got it reversed, but you select that and it would, it would normally be normal. Now you select it, you change the setting to reverse, hold it down, and it changes it to reverse. And that's how you reverse the channel. The next thing that we want to do is set up, set up our modes. And uh, first we connect again, and we go down to modes. The, the modes that I want to set are angle and horizon. Angle is pretty much your stabilize or attitude control as some of uh, you might know it. Um, basically it's auto leveling and it has a limit. It, it, it won't do flips etc. You can push it and it will limit the angle. So that is what I want to take off in. 
Now I'm going to set it up. I'm going to switch on my radio or my transmitter. And I already have a switch set up here for my angle mode. Now when I have it all the way to the top, that is where I want the angle mode to activate. So it is just in that small little area. I don't want it outside of that because I've got multiple switches connected to that. So yeah, that's where I want it. So when I have all my switches set to the top, as I have in my case, I'm not going to show you the radio, it's, it's, it's uh, pretty straightforward. That is where I want the angle mode to be active. So that's nice for taking off, etc. and making sure everything is okay. Now the next one I'm going to set up is horizon mode. Now horizon mode is the same, but that's when I flip the switch one down. Horizon mode is very much like angle mode, except if you keep pushing into a roll or your, uh, sorry, a roll or pitch, it will do actually, it will actually pass that limit and it will do a flip or turn, or etc. So it doesn't limit your angle. Anyway, that is how you set that. So I've got that on angle when everything's at the top and when I'm there or the switch is down I am in horizon mode so those are the only two that I'm going to start off, off with now and um, you can set up, uh, set up additional ones basically that's how you set it up and just remember to save right guys that is pretty much that and we are ready to fly so you can put on props and um, we can take it outside and fly it but we still need to do a little bit of cleanup. I just know at some point someone's going to ask me for PID settings. And, uh, well, bear in mind, PID settings are pretty much specific to each quadcopter. And uh, I've left everything default and I will be playing with my PID settings and uh, tuning my racer as time goes on. And at some stage, I might actually share my PID settings. But in general, it is uh, better to set up your own PID settings. Just search on YouTube for PID settings. And I'm sure you are going to get very many. Right, I've got the battery can disconnected. So I, I can actually now disconnect my transmitter antenna. I'm going to start from the bottom. Because everything is verified, obviously. And uh, I think the first thing I want to do is just stick on our uh, protection foam. Now uh, that will protect the base plate from some knocks and hard landings. Straighten the wires out. And there you go. Now that's how I've noticed they actually fit in there nicely. I'm going to start off with the cable ties that are received. Right, uh, I've got additional cable ties here, which I am going to be using. Okay, and now we can just find a nice place for our transmitter. And there we go. Right, that shouldn't go anywhere. And there we go. Um, the last thing we need to do is just uh, add on our little vibration plate for our camera if we choose to mount the GoPro on there. Right, um, pretty much everything is tightened down. I've just got this little screen set up so you can see the FPV is working. And yes, we are ready to fly.